Hello and welcome. Today we are going to do some MIDI input patching. Okay, and this refers to any MIDI kind of MIDI control that we do not, not have a module for. So, first of all, here's my control instance, and uh, we head on over inside of a library to protocols. Scroll down to simple MIDI and just drop that into of our project. Make that a bit bigger. And we're going to check out a module. And the structure is pretty clear. Up here we have our outputs, MIDI outputs. So anything that we send uh, to the out, uh, MIDI output. And here are our receivers. OK. Next thing we need to do is obviously we need to set our MIDI driver. And first thing we're going to do is I'm going to hit the auto initialize. So the once programmed, the uh, the module will initialize itself. And um, before we actually start, you just need to hook up your uh, MIDI controller, MIDI keyboard, or whatever you have, so that the um, that the program can see its driver, the MIDI driver. And um, here we have just a really simple MIDI interface, and it uh, just call itself USB MIDI interface zero and one. And now we should be connected. Okay, let's see that it's a. Uh, I have a emulator 4K here, it's a really old keyboard, and I'm just sending some notes on and off, receive notes, and I have a couple of sliders here, and I have a pitch band, and some more things here, some buttons and things that do something. Okay. Um, so now we actually want to patch something. So let's say we want to patch the receiving node. So once we get a trigger on a middle C, which is like node 60, it should do something. Okay. So we have a couple of ways to do that. So um, just click on your receiving node action. And this brings us to the properties and we are going to run the dispatch table builder. And you can reach that either from the actions properties and hit the plus, or you come into your property, do right click and say launch dispatch table builder. Okay. So we are already seeing some of the, the latest receipt value that we're getting here. And yes, we're getting data. Okay. So yes, we want to um, oh, we want to add an instance here. Okay. And this kind of represents what we're getting here. Uh, and the data we're getting is error time channel on node and velocity. So time is a timestamp, um, error, yes or no, channel on which channel the MIDI uh, sender sends uh, its MIDI information. Um, note on, note off is basically note on, true. Yes, I pressed the key down. And once I release it, it's a uh, note off value that I'm getting. So note on will become false. We'll go through that in a bit. Uh, note, well, obviously, which note I just pushed and velocity, how hard I actually pushed that, uh, that note or that key. Okay. And let's go and do some, I want node 60. That's like middle C. I'm typing in, that's the, the name of the, of the whole thing. Uh, node equals equals 60. Okay. And here's one thing. Um, we, from a keystroke, from, you know, I'm getting actually two triggers. One, once I press it down, uh, that's my note on, which is note on yes or true. And then I release a note and that's my release uh, note on would be false. And I just want the note on to trigger something because um, you know if I have the note off as well, I'm getting a second trigger and might want not want to have that or that would be good for a target, for example, for a target or something like that. I just, here I don't want that. So I'm going to add some logic and I'm going to add the logical operator is like and uh, uh, and on equals equals to true. Okay. Press return. 
And now what I've created is the condition. So if my input is node 60 and on is true, it's a press down, then please send a trigger to my destination action. And I have something prepared here. And um, that's my, I have to define my module that I want to trigger. That's my mod. And now comes my action mod dot key one. Okay, that's where I want to send my trigger to. Okay, hit OK. We're by send uh, by triggering sending uh, triggering OK. That is actually going to create my code for me. And now let's see if that works. Uh, where's my note sixty? Here's my note sixty, and see I'm getting the value once I press. Um, down the key, then I'm sending a, key, a trigger to this action. Okay. Um, now this is supposed to do something. Okay, let's go into my action and um, let's delete that. And uh, I want to go to Pixera, Timelines. And this could be anything. Um, this could be a uh, go to the next queue, move to the next queue, move to previous queue, but actually or ignore next queue or blend to a certain time or blend to a certain um, queue. This I just want to set to play. Okay, store that. And uh, now I store that. Now you have my time on one here. So now note 60 will send a play command to my timeline. Okay, good. Let's delete that and do the same thing. I want to have Pixera, Timeline, Timeline 1, and this I want to set to pause, and that is inside of my key too. So, coming back to my receiving node, let's say I had my um, middle C, do my play, and I want to launch the dispatch table builder. And I want to have another of those instances. Copy that, paste that. And here, let's say I want my D to node 62 is middle D and on is true. I want that to trigger mod dot key to. Okay. Store that by clicking OK. And now actually my, where's my C? C, C, no, that's 65, here's my C, and by pressing D, I'm going to pause that. And um, could go and do things forever and ever. Um, the actions that you could describe in here, that could be anything, you know, that could be a whole trigger stack, that could trigger some uh, DMX patch, RTAP patch, that could send a trigger to your GPI out um, to anything that we actually have inside of uh, our control session here. Okay, um, I might want to do that um, by connecting my modules here. So let's say I'll, for some reason I want to do that by connecting my actions here and I create a direct out action and now all the data then I'm pressing everything is being sent to this action here and uh, I'm going to start with copying all the properties that I have inside of my my naming scheme here and uh, I'm going to copy because I'm getting all the values except for error um, that's not being passed on if there is no error, so that might be a bit confusing. But I'm just going to copy time channel on node and velocity. And what this does is this defines the naming structure for the input values that I'm getting. Okay, I'm just, just going to pop them into my parentheses here. Store that. Okay, now this action knows yes, the first value that I'm getting is called time. And the second value I'm getting is channel and so on and so on. Now, let's say I want to do the same thing. I want to um, set a condition. 
You know, I just want to receive a trigger or we just want to pass through a, a trigger from, I don't know, node equals equals 64 and equals um and on equals equals true. And that would be the same thing, but we actually created beforehand, but just on a different uh, and a different route. Okay, now just to check if that is actually correct, what we have here, what we're going to do is we're going to dra drag in another new module and we're going to create an action, receive, give that a value name, and let's connect that. Okay. And the beauty of it is now we could, you know, it's like, add action and action and action and just do those uh, <coughs> conditions and uh, let things happen while something, uh, some, some triggers actually being input into the system. So this was my, uh, that is my 60, that's my 62. So this would be, yeah, th this is my 64 and that is being passed on. That's what I want. Okay, so we have that. Um, Coming back to our dispatch table builder, we could extend the condition even further. You know, it's like, um, first of all, let's say we want, just want to pass on the velocity of how hard I actually press my key. I just type in that parameter name. And now, uh, if I, uh, yeah. Here's my, my 60, my key 60 is passed on to key one. And now I'm just seeing the, the, the velocity values coming in here. Okay, um, do that with any parameter we're passing into the, con inside of the condition here. Um, okay, next thing is that uh, let's say I just wanna pass or pass a trigger if my velocity is is bigger or equal to some value, 60, let's say 60, okay? Okay, so if I have a soft note, then nothing should actually happen. Okay, something happened, uh, launch dispatch table builder. No. That's me, I'm sorry. Have to put my logical operator here and velocity bigger equal 60. Okay. So um, here we go and Pixar is back on track. Now, see, I'm getting my 60, my node 60, but nothing is triggering. Now if it hit it harder, I'm getting the value. I'm pushing it soft, nothing happens. So you can, already work with some and have some logic on this at this point okay so last thing we might want to do is we want to get the slider data so um, slider data is a control change here and we basically going to do the same thing we are going to do right click and launch the dispatch table builder this is empty because we are actually creating a new dispatch table builder for a different action. Okay, um, getting my same thing here, seeing my last values and uh, control changes, arrow time channel controller value. So this is my controller and there's my value. That's what I wanna have. Okay, hit the plus and uh, I'm gonna do the same. Um, set my condition controller equals equals 24 okay and um, I just want to pass on the parameter what was it value okay value let's do that okay and I want to have a receiving action this is my mod dot slider Good. 
press OK, that creates a code. So let's see if that actually. Yeah, here we're getting the data, and we're just getting the getting the value data. Okay, perfect. So let's say we want to route that to a timeline opacity. Um, problem is that we have is that the value we're getting is between 0 and 227 and the timeline data that we need uh, the opacity data uh, range is from 0 to 1 so let's do that let's fix that we go into our tools into math and grab a range module okay Inside of our config, our minimum input from MIDI is going to be zero. Our maximum input is going to be 127. And we want that from zero to range into one on our timeline. Okay, now we need to connect to you the output of the slider module. Okay. Here we are. Input. And we need to route the output to something, so we are going to create another reaction and call that timeline. Timeline one, and we're going to define a name for our input value. Let's call it val. Um, okay, and we're going to route the input in our timeline one, and let's see if we're getting. We're seeing the input values ranging from 0 to 127, and this being ranged to 0 to 1, and this is where we actually receive this value. Okay, now we need to come in. Now we finally we have to do some coding. We have to be clever. Okay, so um, we want to actually trigger. Let's change this up here to our block diagram programming, and we want to do Pixara, timeline, yeah, timeline one, and we want to set the opacity. And usually we do that with a slider or something like that. We just leave that empty. We are just going to store that. And now we're going to change the mode and the view up here and press this block diagram. And we're going to our loop programming and see what we have. We're getting the input and we gave that input a variable name and we call it val, V-A-L. Now what I'm going to do is pick that with timeline, timeline get instance, timeline one, that's all correct, set opacity. And here, this would actually, once I trigger that, it would set the opacity to zero, dark. Now, I won't want that as a fixed value. I just want that to be set by a variable. And we call that variable val, so I'm just passing that in. So this Lua code actually knows, yeah, go and grab that input values and put that into the code right here. So, um, okay, let's see, slider 24, and we're getting the values. Okay, now we check, go and check it inside of our compositing and uh, go to timelines. And we see the timeline is actually, time opacity is down to zero and everything's a pack. And uh, we bring that in, and we have now the slider and the tunnel opacity um, runs along with our fader that we have set here. Okay, and there's so much else you could do around this and uh, with the MIDI boards and stuff like that. Um, we're probably going to see more and more MIDI boards pre-configured as modules, but if you don't have a pre-configured module for your MIDI, um, controller it's actually pretty easy to program something yourself um, if you have any questions let us know drop us an email uh, private message whatever and uh, we'd love to get in touch thank you so much cheers and bye